Hello and welcome to this month's Wild World of Wounds. This month we're going to go through a case presentation that comes from uh, my book, ER Behind the Curtain, The Survivalist Guide to the ER, which goes through some of the more uh, unusual uh, experiences I had in the emergency department and, and uh, give strategies of how to survive the ER, both from a practitioner standpoint and from a patient standpoint. But this case today we're going to go through is necrotizing fasciitis of a 55-year-old African-American male that I saw in the emergency department. He presented with a host of complaints, including high potassium heart failure, his kidneys were shutting down, his, he had diabetes, his heart was going into different arrhythmias, he was vomiting blood, he was in shock, his blood pressure was out of control, and this is how I looked as I was uh, trying to make sense of all these problems. What was interesting is that all of these issues, it turned out, were stemming from his feet. And on his foot, I found hemorrhagic bulla, small little vesicles and, and uh, fluid-filled bubbles on the, on the top of his foot with some surrounding crepitance, which is a Rice Krispies type feel on palpation. And this was necrotizing fasciitis, also known as the flesh-eating bacteria, like the, the blob, you know, chasing the kids out of the movie theater, or the zombie attack, eat your flesh. Um, I like this cartoon. How, how everything goes to hell during a zombie apocalypse. It all starts with some bleep scientist doing bleep he shouldn't be doing. I know, let's mix rabies with this old meatloaf and feed it to the gorilla. Yeah, not a good idea. So anyway, what is necrotizing fasciitis? It's not a flesh-eating zombie or blob, but uh, it is a bacteria that can uh, move very quickly through the planes of our tissue uh, and uh, very quickly destroy uh, muscle, so uh, subcutaneous tissue, and basically liquefy an extremity, or even worse, uh, part of, uh, of our central core if we're unlucky enough to develop necrotizing fasciitis uh, on the abdomen, buttocks, chest, face. Um, the classic presentation and what this patient had was hemorrhagic bulla. Anytime we see a cellulitis associated with bubbles or bumps that are uh, blood filled, it should really raise our antenna for necrotizing fasciitis. And this particular patient uh, who had necrotizing fasciitis, his entire body was shutting down. He was going into DIC, uh, disseminated intervascular coagulopathy, which is why he was vomiting blood. His heart was failing. His kidneys were shutting down. He was going into ATN. So basically every organ system was shutting down because of this overwhelming massive infection. Um, mortality rate at the time of diagnosis is typically thought of as high as 50%. And the longer delay you have to treatment, that number is just going to rise. So besides the hemorrhagic bulla, another key uh, physical exam finding when you're thinking about necrotizing fasciitis is to palpate around the area of... Um, of the infection looking for subcutaneous air, that Rice Krispies feeling of air in the tissues. Now not every infection, not every serious subcutaneous or a necrotizing infection is going to have subcutaneous air, but if you feel it, that should again be a four alarm fire that this person has a potentially life-threatening uh, soft tissue infection. And then I think this warrants mentioning as well. There seems to be two disparate presentations of necrotizing fasciitis. There's the pain out of proportion to your exam. And anytime you see that, that again should be a signal that you need to look further. A patient who has tremendous pain, and I've seen this before, where 
you're giving them pain medicines and it's not working and they are just in agony but what you're seeing on the surface doesn't look that bad it looks like just a you know a minor infection whenever you see that again you need to think about necrotizing fasciitis now at the same time there's a completely opposite presentation which i've actually seen probably more often than the pain out of proportion to exam presentation the one i've actually seen more often is the indifference. People say I'm indifferent, but I don't care. Uh, the indifference to their infection. I've seen where a patient has told me, oh, I've got this little infection. Take a look. I don't know. It doesn't seem too bad. I pull back the sheet and I literally almost vomited <laughs> on my patient because it was so shocking uh, and so different from what I expected to see. You know, just rotting flesh you know, and the smell of rotting flesh, where the patient just doesn't seem to understand or care or have any sensation that their body has like rotted or a portion of their body is dead. Um, and I'm not sure what that is, if it's something the bacteria does to affect their brain where they're, you know, it makes them not care about it, uh, or that it's so often in diabetics who don't have any sensation anyway, so they don't feel any pain, so they figure maybe it's not that bad. So I'm not sure exactly what it is, but those two different presentations, the, eh, I feel fine, it's no big deal, and my leg's about to fall off, or the, wow, it really doesn't look that bad, but they're in agony. Those are some very key uh, signals that you need to look further and look for necrotizing fasciitis. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this month's Wild World of Wounds, necrotizing fasciitis, hemorrhagic bulla, subcutaneous air, pain out of proportion to exam, or the opposite, an indifference to what looks like a more serious infection. You got to think about it, and we'll see you next month. Bye for now.